Joining us now, former Republican presidential candidate Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. It's very exciting for him. <laughs> no, it's very exciting for him. Good to have Good you morning. on the set. He's trying, he's trying to figure out, am I going one? to be a senator in the age of Trump or the age of Cruz? Yeah, but are those the only choices? No, you also have. They can vote for Hillary. In there, well, I thought you fill in the blank as well, right? Oh, I mean, good. There's always fill in okay. the blank. Well, that's a, there is a good. Um, so, um, I think it's David Ignatius' piece in the Post this morning that names a few other people. Bill Crystal is talking about yeah. other people. Yeah. No. So, so uh, talk talk about you. You have been all across your state. I don't know how many? 50, 55 town hall meetings. What are you seeing out there? What are you hearing? I think the, the, the people are greatly disconnected from Washington and unhappy with Washington. And I'll give you an example. Two weeks ago, I tried to block the sale, the subsidized sale, where taxpayers pay for F-16s for Pakistan. Nobody in my state is for that. You know, we've got roads we need, we've got schools that need repaired, we've got things at home that need to be fixed. And we've sent $15 <coughs> billion dollars to Pakistan, and they basically laugh and cash our check, and they don't change their behavior. They persecute Christians. They uh, are have imprisoned the guy who helped get, us, get bin Laden, Shaquille Afridi. So people at home don't understand us sending that money overseas when we have problems in Kentucky. No. What about Donald Trump? What, do, you, do you have people coming up to you, uh, Trump supporters saying, what does the party not get? Or do you have other people saying, you know, this guy's going to destroy our party? How, how do you deal with the divisive nature of that type of support? The funny thing is, is though I know it's talked about quite frequently on the news, and uh -huh. nobody really asks me that much about it. Occasionally people ask me if I'm endorsing. Because I, I, can tell, I, can I, I can tell you wherever yeah. I go, whether Everywhere. I'm in northwest Florida or whether I'm on the upper right. west side of Manhattan, that's all people want to ask me about. Well, see, is I mean, he a threat to, but is he a threat to America? Yeah, uh, I guess, he, but what we hear a lot of times is there are local issues. For example, the big topic for the last couple of weeks in Kentucky is Hillary Clinton saying that we are going to put coal miners out of business. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, we have 10,000 coal miners out of work in Kentucky. And when Hillary Clinton says, I think very brazenly, that she's going to put more of them out of business, yeah. that upsets people in Kentucky. So we some, some issues are more local than right. national. What you might hear at a town hall meeting. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the rules by which your party selects its nominee, which are getting a lot of scrutiny now? Are they fair? Do they give voters a, a big enough voice? <laughs> well, I don't know. I hear someone's been saying they're rigged. I don't think they're rigged, but they are biased and uh, intentionally so. What's the difference? Well, I mean, rigged would mean that it was illegal, it was somehow shady. No, it's done somewhat in the open, but they are biased in favor of um, the establishment. So, for example, in 2012, when my dad was running, they made a special rule that said you can't be nominated unless you win eight states. Mm. And then they didn't count his votes. But interesting now, if you talk to all of the Republican establishment, they're saying, oh, yeah, your votes can be counted. This is a big deal. Because think about it, Kasich's votes cannot be counted. Under Rule 40B, they should not be counted. And if it was because wrong, he Paul, hasn't won eight states. they were not counted in 2012. In fact, if you look at the clips, you'll see the clips in Iowa votes, 28 votes for Ron Paul. And the, the podium says, and Iowa votes, 28 votes for Mitt Romney. They just didn't even announce or repeat. They repeated that the votes didn't go to him. But this yeah. year, they want the opposite. So is that a fair <laughs> interpretation of the rules? And when you think about it, both Cruz and Trump have a great deal of incentive not to let anybody else have votes. That's what the rules currently state. However, 110 people are going to be very important. That's the Rules Committee, and they're going to decide what the rules are. And I think you want to see a contentious room. It's going to be those 110 people. But, but should the rules. there be a big broad based effort to change it so that next cycle, the voters have a more of a say rather than elites and well, it's always people things. trying to change the rules to their advantage, and uh, so I don't know. You know, we always are uncertain who the establishment is. We're always very wary of who that is. <laughs> We're always uncertain of who they are, and uh, people will try to change it to their advantage. But every election changes, and I'm not so sure you can predict the advantage for 2020 that comes out of the rules. See, they didn't predict it. They tried to exclude my father in 2012, and now it's backfiring on some people who would like to see Kasich or Rubio. My understanding of the rules, if they follow the precedent of 2012, is Rubio and Kasich cannot uh, have votes counted. People could stand up and say they're for them on the first ballot, but they won't count. But the question is, second, third, fourth ballot, everybody's saying they can come back. My understanding is that the rule says their votes don't count. Yeah. S Senator, uh, Republicans that end up winning the, their presidential nomination have a long and proud history of losing. Losing first being humiliated, 
going back home, learning lessons, and coming back. I'm not saying you're you've been. I'm here. wondering who we're talking about not, here. Well, you know, we're we're talking about we're talking about Reagan. We're talking right. about Nixon. We're talking about Dole. We're talking about McCain. We're talking about just about every Republican that ended winning out the nomination, and they won because they learned something. Uh, in their loss. And, I, and I, I wasn't saying you were being humiliated. I was over, over, <laughs> overplaying that part of it. But what's the lesson? What's your takeaway? You're, you are a young man. What's your takeaway from this process that could help you in a future right. run? I guess I'll tell you that my hope is that it's not the message that was defeated. I think on an intellectual uh, playing field, I think our message resonates and actually uh, trumps the other message. But we got sort of uh, trumped by celebrity. Right. And so I think we continue to talk about that if you're fiscally conservative, you have to look at military spending. If you are really conservative, you really shouldn't be for destabilizing the Middle East through toppling regimes. And that's a big debate because probably the majority of my party still believes that toppling Assad is a good idea. The toppling Gaddafi was a good idea. But interestingly, the president admitted it was a terrible decision for to topple Gaddafi. He didn't quite put it that way. He said right. he should have thought more about it before he did. But to our mind, those who believe in the Constitution, we say the Constitution forces you to think because no president is allowed to unilaterally take us to war. There's a debate in Congress. Yeah. And we go to war when we have consensus. Because of that, because of Trump's celebrity, do you look back and think, you could have done anything different that could have significantly changed the game? Not really. I, I think that, uh, I think virtually everybody got trumped in the sense that, I mean, he was getting 25 times more coverage than all of the other candidates combined. It was overwhelming. And Cruz was able to stick around and make his way through that. Right. And uh, that's a good strategy, but I'm not so sure it necessarily worked for me either <laughs> because our coalition was probably a little bit different than others. And, um, but I do think that uh, on the intellectual plane, our ideas are winning on the idea of, of whether or not we should always intervene in every right. civil war. I think we're winning some of those battles, at least among the public. Senator Rand Paul, thank you very much for being oh, thank on the you. set thank with you, us Senator. today. Still I ahead, appreciate it. Great filmmaker you. Ken Burns turns his camera on the man that changed baseball and the country forever. Jackie Robinson and NBC's Tom Brokaw joins the conversation as well. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.